Hi everyone and welcome to today's demonstration. Today we're going to take a look at the white source repository integrations and more specifically around Azure DevOps repositories. For the first half of the session, we're going to take a look at the integration process. And for the second half, we'll take a look at a demonstration and some of the key values that this integration delivers around scanning your application for security vulnerabilities and potential incompatible licenses. My name is Luke Brogan, and I'm one of the solution engineers here at WhiteSource. So let's go ahead and just exit PowerPoint. And I'm going to head straight into the white source technical wiki, where we have guides around all of our integrations, especially one here for the Azure repository. So everything we will be talking about today will be documented in this page here, step by step. So we'll certainly use this as a reference throughout the demonstration. So the first thing we need to do is head over to your Azure DevOps environment. Click on the organizational settings in the bottom left and head over to the users area. So first of all, we would recommend a dedicated bot user for white source. So that can be leveraged when scanning the repositories. And we can also see where the automated pull requests are coming from. So first of all, get a new user created and then sign on as that user or go ahead and interpret the user there. Next, once you're signed on as the new bot user, we need to create a personal access token or PAT for short. And all you need to do is click on new token and allow full access for this token. Give it a name like a white source repository and then save that and make note of the key. I've already done that here. I've got one called Azure DevOps repo and I've already got it saved in Notepad. So next, head over to your white source UI. As an admin, click on the integrate tab, scroll down, expand developer integrations, white source for Azure repos, and paste in your access token for the bot user. Make sure you click save. And if there are any issues around permissions or uh, maybe it's been copied incorrectly, a warning will appear at the bottom of the screen. If that's all successful, we can then go on to manage workflow rules. We can go ahead and create a new rule here, but I've got two already created, which will generate a fixed pull request based on any medium or high severity vulnerability, which has been detected in the repository. So this is around the automation piece for detection and then giving us a fixed pull request. So make sure you have the workflow rules created for your environment. Next, we can go back to Azure DevOps, go back to the, the home page, select your project, head over to the repositories. And the first thing I want to do is bring on or import a new repository just for the demo. So for this, I'm going to go over to GitHub and copy WebGoat, which is a insecure Java application by design. I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the clone URL. This example, I'll just add on uh, WS to the name so we can track it easily through the integration. Go ahead and click import and that'll take place for us. We can see the import has been successful and the page will automatically refresh and take us to the new imported repository. So once that's done with white source integrated, you will receive a pull request to merge in a .white source configuration file. So that can be done per repository. And we can also manage and maintain that configuration file from a master copy within the repository we see here. But if we head over to the pull requests, we can see white source for our repos has been created. But what I'll do in this example is head over to files and create my own new .white source file. So it has to be called .white source in order to be interpreted correctly. And I've got my own settings listed here. And there's a few key differences. 
from the default one, which we've already seen. So here I'm checking for license violations. I'm scanning infrastructure as code. And I'm also taking a look at the merge confidence feature for these pull requests. So I'll go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, paste it into the contents, and go ahead and commit that new file. The scan will now take place based on that commit and create issues and work items within the boards area. So if we go ahead and click on the board, we have filtered here by WebGoat WS, and we can see there's lots of uh, security vulnerabilities which have been detected. And now we can reassign them to the correct teams or any colleagues who may work on this environment. Scrolling down, we also have license policies which have been triggered because there's GPLs detected in the project. And we've also created an infrastructure as code violation to do with a Docker file in the repository. If we take a look at any of the CVs, what's important here is we don't need to use the white source application or sign on to a different area to take a look at all of the vulnerability information, such as a path to the library, details of a vulnerability, the scoring details, and most importantly, the remediation and suggested fix. So if we want to check now how our scan is doing, we can go over and head to the repository, commit. We can just discard the changes here. And taking a look at the last commit, we can click on this file here. We can see the security check is currently running. And this is telling us that that check is obviously in progress. So we can return in a moment's time when that's been completed. So the scan has now completed. We can see the results from that commit. We can see 11 license checks are in violation. Scrolling down, we can see obviously the infrastructure as code example we saw earlier. And most importantly, the 59 security vulnerabilities which have been detected. So based from this, we can then take a look at the automated pull requests. So we can see 21 pull requests have been created in order to remediate these vulnerabilities. And just scrolling down through these, there is an example just called JSU. Go ahead and take a look at that. Now, this is going to address uh, a number of security vulnerabilities. And we can see the upgrade path listed here. We also have the merge confidence data around the age and the adoption rates of this PR. Most importantly, how many pipelines are passing after this type of change. We can see the overall confidence level is very high. So that means we can use this change with a lot more confidence. And we would still recommend due diligence to, to make sure this is compatible, but we can see this is not a broken build or maybe an upgrade which would introduce more issues once complete. So that's everything I wanted to cover in today's demonstration. I hope you found this insightful. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you and goodbye.